Welcome back to our weekly lesson study. Today being one of the hands of moon, we're going to focus on the risen Christ. But before that, we're going to look at the topics that we've tackled throughout the lessons so that we may see the journey with Mark, the journey. So in our first lesson, we had the beginning of the gospel. And we saw Jesus beginning the gospel just after baptism. John the Baptist being brought to the uh, prison, and Jesus proclaimed that the time is uh, fulfilled and everything is done. The judgment is near and people need to repent. And then we also saw a day in the ministry of Jesus. We see Jesus preaching until dawn. And then the disciples who were uh, trying hard to catch fish, and they couldn't. Jesus doing first miracle there. And we see Jesus Christ making them, instead of being fishers of fish, uh, they are being fishers of men. And then we also see controversies in Jerusalem where they thought that Jesus came to destroy the law. But instead, Jesus is trying to uh, make the law stronger. And one of the commandments that he emphasizes on is love that cut us across. And we also see miracle around the lake. And then we see Jesus calming the storms. A lot of miracles he did around the lake. And he did uh, casting out the demon from somebody who was demon possessed. Our God is so great. We see inside how uh, when people thought that it's what we hit that make you a sinner or a righteous man. But Jesus challenged them by saying that whatever goes inside somebody does not defile a man, but it's what goes out that defiles a man. So that we may focus on whatever we are fed of. Which one is it? Is it the Herodian bread or Jesus' bread as the bread of life? And we also see the teaching of disciples. Jesus is teaching the disciples. We are the great steward. We also have the sermon on the mountain. And disciples getting to know more about the kingdom of God. He reveal it through the master's seed, the kingdom of God growing. Like today, we're going to preach the gospel just to someone and us all to be converted. We also see Jerusalem controversies. We see Jesus coming into Jerusalem, but to his despair, I found uh, the Pharisees making uh, the temple of God a uh, day of selling. But Jesus says, my father's house she will be a house of worship, not a shopping center. When we see the last days of Jesus Christ, he is preparing for his crucifixion. He is also preparing for his death and burial, finally the death. Then we see Jesus taken and tried. And for that reason, we also uh, are informed of how the trial of Jesus Christ is unto us because Jesus says that if they took the master, then even the disciples must be taken and tried. And that's why we really face a lot of tribulation. But at the hand, like Jesus and Jude, and he became a victor of all, we are assured as Christians that we are going to endure forever. And then today, we are going to focus on risen Lord. Brethren, let's pray before we start. Father, in your holy name, we come before you. We have seen us, Lord. We don't deserve thy grace, but Lord, because your mercies are uh, limitless, we come with the whole burden that we have, Lord, because you say, come unto me, and you, you will give us a lighter yoke, Lord, because the yoke you give to your people is that of freedom and that which make your people grow in you, Lord. I pray for someone who is facing depression. I pray for someone who is facing some challenges in life that they might lose hope. Some of us may have lost hope in you, Lord. But today you're giving us hope that is beyond all the challenges of life. That as you have risen, you've given us this key of grave. 
that death has no power today over us because you are risen, Lord. I pray that your spirit may abide with us and today us all may be saved and may be lifted and the pit of the despondency may be seized and the hope that is everlasting may always lie among your people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So today we're going to focus on the reason, Lord. And uh, one of the things I do all share with uh, my fellows is that when Jesus could just have died and not raising up or resurrecting, then our hope as Christians will just have been as, as good as dead. But that's the most important part of Christianity, the rising or the resurrection of Christ. Take, for example, if Jesus could just have died for your sins and never to come back, uh, he is just gone and death has just swallowed him up. What hope will we have? Remember, after the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, we have the burial of Jesus Christ. Because it was on a Friday, they were hurrying to bury Jesus Christ. And now we had somebody who was called Joseph of Arimathea. He was a Jew because Arimathea was a, a Jewish state. He was in hurry because the Sabbath was coming near. And we are told that he hugs the body of Christ so that he may bury him. He had dark a tomb that was placed there, and no one had been buried there. So he took the body of Christ, and that's why we deny the fact that uh, some people think Jesus had been buried in Wednesday, Thursday. The Bible says in the book of Luke 23, verse 54, that, uh, and, uh, 257, that on the preparation day, we see Joseph of Arimathea taking the body of Christ. And because of that, they were in hurry because the Sabbath was approaching. So Jesus, on Friday evening, is taken to the tomb. And we see uh, a man who was one of the council held and now a centurion taking the body of Christ, those who are disciples of Jesus. But they were in silence. They are taking the body of Christ with a fine linen, and he is laid on a sepia. Out of that, the body of Jesus Christ is uh, laid to rest. And then we see on Sabbath, Jesus Christ is resting. An indication of Sabbath rest. He has fulfilled the promise and the commandment that is fought when we read the book of Exodus 8, uh, verse uh, 20, verse 8, I mean. When we read that, we realize that obey the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Jesus resting on the same day after his death shows us clearly that we too as Christians should rest on Sabbath. And then we see early in the morning, on Sunday morning, we have some women arising to their tomb, and to their surprise, they didn't find what they expected. Remember, they came with precious things, they came with hauntment, also they came with oil, to so not the body of Christ. They were there to uh, make the body of Christ laid to rest peacefully. And we see that to their surprise, they didn't find the body of Christ. But one word, is uh, amazing there that you seek the dead among uh, the living among the dead. They see two men standing, but what surprises them is that they don't see Jesus Christ. It is like they have forgotten what Jesus said when he was still with them that I, I will face this tribulation, but after three, after these days. On the third day, I will rise to life again. And the Bible says that, and when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome had brought sweet spikes that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the scepture 
and rays of the sun, and they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of Septim? And when they look, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the scepter, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were amazed. And he said unto them, Be amazed not. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, he is risen, he is not here, behold the place where he laid him. So they were mesmerized and they were filled with nostalgia because it was a mixture of feeling. They were left in surprise because they never knew whether to laugh about it, whether to cry about it. At first, they thought of who is to roll the stone. Remember, when Jesus was buried, the council were afraid that his tomb and uh, his body will be stolen by the disciples, and they may claim that he is risen. And that's why the soldiers, and let me tell you that the soldiers that were there were very many, that uh, there were many to roll the stone. The stone was heavy, that just one person could never roll it away. So the soldiers in their numbers came and rolled the stone to close the body of Christ so that no one can steal it away so that the claim that is risen may be pronounced. But to their despair or to their surprise, Jesus is risen and there is no one who has rolled the stone. There were holy women that were there and they were surprised who is to roll the stone, but they found the tomb uh, opened. A great word is pronounced at first that he is risen. As I have said, that if Jesus could have died for our sins and he never rose again, then our salvation could be half done. It could never be uh, full or complete. But the fact that the young man in the tomb is proclaiming that his reason is the hope that we have had today, that those who die in Christ shall rise just as he did. Because if Jesus could preach of resurrection, but he himself never resurrected, that is a mockery, and that is just a humor. But Jesus, his word is truth, and he also is truth. And he also says, I am the resurrection, I am the life. He who believes me, in me will also resurrect. But you go your way, tell the disciples and Peter, that he goes before you in Galilee. The young man tells the women at the tomb that you go your way. Remember this. Don't forget to tell the disciples. And tell Peter also. Why Peter is separated from the disciples. Yet he is one of the disciples. It's something that uh, keep on leaking in my mind. But get this. Peter, after the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, he was hopeless. And he was one of the disciples who was looking Jesus Christ as a Messiah, not just a Messiah who was to come and save the humankind, but he was that one that was to redeem the Jewish state from the Roman authority. But he is now deeply at broken but the fact that Jesus is dying Jesus became helpless on his side he's trying to help Jesus not to be crucified not to be jailed and Jesus rebuked him what a sad thing from Peter and Peter lost hope in everything and he was never with the disciples again and that's why when the angel of God is now talking to these women he is mentioning Peter by name, separate from the disciples. He had left the faith. And the disciples, tell, uh, the, the Bible tells us in other books that Peter had gone to his old and business of selling uh, fish, of fishing, and he went back to his old and ways. And that's why Jesus had to call him by name. It is my prayer today. 
that as Jesus called the Christians today, as he visited people, he might call you by name. Because when Jesus calls you by name, just as Peter say, in you I will build my church, you have the rock. And that's why Peter got the name Cephas. You, the rock, in you I will build the church. If today Jesus will visit some people, let you be among them, that he may build a, his faith, his church on you, and he may visit even those that you cannot pronounce to humankind, those of your suffering, and those that desert you, he may tackle them. And then we see people rejoicing. His reason and his apples also are their way to. When you see people like uh, Cleophas, we see him and the other disciples, two disciples, in that way, on their way to Emmaus. Uh, we see that they encounter Jesus Christ. But they fail to recognize. Jesus asked them, on what topic are you talking about? And then he say, are you a stranger in this city? Don't you know how they really ruthlessly dealt with somebody who was innocent? Jesus of Nazareth. How the chief priest, how the Pharisees dealt with him. But they tell Jesus Christ that there are some women who told us that they saw the tomb uh, empty. We are surprised of that. But Jesus reminded them, you of little faith, don't you remember what he said when he was still with you, that I will face this and this, I will be tried, I will be crucified. Don't you forget or don't you remember what the laws and the prophets talks about me? That the disciples shall suffer in the hands of the wicked, and on the third day he will rise. As Jonah also did, he also is crucified death. He also has won our sin and given us the eternal life. And then we have Jesus again appearing to Mary and to other disciples. But one thing we should never forget as we wind up that there is something Jesus is leaving for the disciples. After all the surprise, we see him even going and eating with the disciples. When you read the book of John 20 verse 28, one of the disciples that was doubting, really doubting, that Jesus had risen, somebody was called uh, Thomas, and that's why the name came, the Doubting Thomas. He now proclaimed Jesus as God. In the book of John 20, verse 28, the Bible says, and Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Thomas never believed that Jesus could be that one who is risen, because their hope was God. But today, when Jesus had clarified and conspicuously explained all in detail, and he said, here is my hand, here is my ribs, Thomas then say, my Lord and my God. Today you might have doubt in Jesus Christ, and you may fear even uh, getting into Christian faith because you think Jesus never risen. Some people say he never died. It was just a claim. But how foolish could the disciples be? Disciples, after that, we see them dying for Jesus Christ. Most of them were persecuted. We see Matthew and Andrew skin the life. We saw John uh, being boiled in uh, oil, very hot oil. But after that, he never died. Even after his hide removed, and he in the Highland of Patmos still proclaim the gospel, and that's where the revelation comes uh, from God unto him. How could they be foolish to die for someone who hasn't risen, someone who is a liar, who tells them, I will rise and never rise again? How could they be foolish to follow that kind of person 
Why could they defend the death of Jesus? Uh, how could they defend uh, if they themselves were in doubt? But Jesus clarified the doubt. Some of them, like Peter, went to their business, but Jesus called them back to ministry. And then he said, go he into all the world and proclaim the world. Tell them about the good news. And the good news is that Jesus is risen. Today, we may face a lot of tribulation, some of the family challenges, some of the families do not even have peace. They do not even have peace with each other. But I want to tell you, Jesus is bringing an eternal peace, and that peace no one and no man can take away from you. Today, we are left in the pit of despondency. We are hopeless. But Jesus is bringing hope. There is a child that is crying for intimidation, criticism, and all that. But Jesus Christ knows you. That's why he says, come to me, he who are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. One thing that Christians will never avoid is to take good message. The resurrection of Christ is our hope. That's our great hope. And that we, we should take to the world that Jesus loves them. John 3 verse 16 says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And that's the gospel we are giving unto you. He who listen today, take Jesus as your savior. Because those who do not take Jesus as their savior, all of us, we are going to die. It's okay. We are going to die. And we have no excuse for that. We have no uh, solution to death. But those who die in Jesus Christ have the solution. And the solution is Jesus himself. He says, I am the life. I am the resurrection. But who unto you that who refuses to uh, believe in Jesus Christ? Because upon Jesus' return, you will be left in shame. There is no life for you after death, and there is no hope for you after death. To them that are left in the pleasures of the world, that we treasure so much in the worldly and the worldly things, and we leave the work of God undone. Our people, our beloved people, it is time for us to change our mind and to change our way of lifestyle so that we may live a life that glorifies God. And we may say things that give God glory so that upon his return, we may say, Verily, Lord, we've awaited you. You are the Lord we've awaited for this long. Take us home. In the book of 1 Corinthians 15 verse 54, the Bible says, When this corruptible shall be made incorruptible, and this mortal shall be made immortal, then shall come to pass. They say that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Verse 55 says that, O oh grave, where is the victory? O oh death, where is thy sting? I really long for that day when we all shall have risen with Christ. We all celebrate resurrection. Baptism reminds us of something that we die with Christ. When somebody is baptized, you are immersed in water. A symbol, a replica of Jesus' death. We die with Christ and we rise upon our baptism. That it is not us who lives again, but it is Christ who lives in us. Many of us struggle with uh, peer pressure. Many of us struggle with sin. Many of us struggle with evil. But you just struggling because it is still you living in you, and it is still you struggling with the sin. But I want to give you a solution. I want to give you a healing medicine for all that has been disturbing you. Your struggle is laid down to rest at Jesus' feet. 
When Jesus is living in you, it is not you to bear your struggle. It is not you to bear your sins. When you are baptized in Christ, it is no longer you living uh, in you, but it is Christ living in you. And you will uh, find, you won't find any difficulty in dealing with sin because Christ has have one for you. Resurrection is something that is very important for Christians. And we should never deny it. And we should celebrate it because in resurrection, we are assured of the next life to come. I call you to Christianity. I call you to Christ. One and holy one who was the key of grave. And he defeated death when the whole world were hopeless. And they thought their story ends when one died. He gave us a, a good challenge that there is life after death. In Romans uh, 8 verse 18, the Bible says that I recall that the suffering of this present world is not worthy to be compared with the glory that is yet to be revealed. The glory is yet to be revealed, but to those that believe in Christ. So the suffering of this present time should not deter us from believing in Christ. Let us always have Christ in us and believe in him. Let us pray more. And without faith, we are going to inherit the kingdom of God. Until then, let's meet. We're going to pray. Almighty Father, we've really seen miraculous things that happened when you died. You, Lord, manifested yourself upon the pit of despondency when the whole humanity was in despair because their hope was lost. The one they believed to be the Redeemer was dead and they knew that all that they've sacrificed and all the time they wasted with you, Lord, is in vain. But you gave them a challenge and hope that no man could never take, uh, could take out from them that there is life after death. And that happened when you defeated death and everybody saw it and you reason, and Lord, from that we have hope that is everlasting, that even though we lose the loved one, and even though we face tribulation, even though the diseases may take us uh, in chains, and we all may suffer, there is a hope that is beyond death, is beyond our suffering, that you are coming back for your second time to take us home, and you just coming back to those that believe in you. To those that do not believe in you, Lord, will be ashamed, and to us, we will receive the glory that is yet to be revealed, Lord. I pray that today, the same encouragement you gave to your disciples, that you may, uh, you're going, but you're not going to leave us as orphans. You're going to leave us the Holy Spirit to guide us, and Lord, you're going to prepare us uh, a mansion. Some people live in despair, but Lord, I pray that today you may give them hope. And Lord, even as we face all this, let your power be manifested. I want to pray for the churches that are always uh, in demon uh, position. And Lord, you may always reveal yourself to them. And that your power may be uh, manifested among thy people, Lord. I also pray for the sick. I also pray for those that have lost their loved one. May you comfort them, Lord. We are really eager, waiting for your second advent, Lord. If it pleases you so that we meet with our brethren listening today, then let it be so. If we don't meet in this world, let us meet in your paradise where death will be swallowed up in victory. Thank you for always listening unto us. Keep on giving us knowledge that is abundant to spread unto the people that are living in this world of despondency that we may not want anymore. Take control of everything we're going to do throughout the week and throughout our life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray and believe. Amen.